Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse the Plants. We love bringing you new videos every week. And I know you enjoy watching them. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when new content is posted. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now sit back and watch this. I'm excited about this message because it's prophetic that I'm about ready to preach. And I believe you're going to get excited about it also. So if you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 12. And you'll be blessed by this. And I, I believe this because this is coming. And I believe in the very, very near future. What I've learned about God, he's no respecter person. If you'll bless people 4,000 years ago, he'll bless them today. And the Bible said he's the same yesterday. Today and forever. And I want to read something here in the King James, Exodus chapter 12. Uh, there's been 10 plagues have hit Pharaoh and the nation of Israel because he bullheaded. Because they had, they had been slaves for 430 years. That's a long time to be a slave. I mean, children, 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 you know, and everything. And I want to start reading with verse 29. And, uh, I, and I want to read this. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians. There was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go and serve the Lord as you have said. In other words, my God, man, he got so bad, he said, you got to get these crazy Israelites out of here. Also, take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. In other words, he said, get out, because if you get out, I, I, bless me too. Because he realized the blessing that was on Moses and the people. Verse 33, and the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened their kneading troughs being uh, bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians. The word borrowed, they, made, they asked, they said, you need to give us the gold and the stuff that we worked for for 430 years. That word borrowed, that means given. They borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor. Everybody say favor. favor. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Lord. So, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. I want to talk this morning about the big payoff. The payoff's coming, ladies and gentlemen. The big payoff. God created this planet, and when he created this planet, there were no sinners. So everything that you see on this planet, silver, gold, diamond, all, everything was not given to the sinner, was given to his family, which is us. Now, we have been in this for thousands of years, but the payoff is coming. He did it for the nation of Israel. He's going to do it for me and you. You better get ready, buddy. You better build you some houses. You better get some place to put this stuff because the stuff is coming. The tsunami of blessing is coming. Do you see that? I mean, spiritually, physically, financially, in every area, they'll get to a point they said, let them Christians get out of here because, my God, their God is more powerful than we thought. You see what I'm saying? That's spiritual, physical, and financial. That's why God told you to believe in a hundredfold. Because when he's when he going to start doing this, you're going to have a hard time counting what God's going to give you in terms of finance. All the health you could ever imagine. People are going to stop getting sick. These people went out, ladies and gentlemen, and the girl's dress grew with the girl. The foot grew, grew with the shoe, grew with the foot everything. And they went out there. We started out as slaves and they came back into the desert as multi-millionaires, each and every one of them. Somebody shout somebody. The payoff is coming. The big payoff. How many of you deserve it? How many of you deserve it? I des I mean, Stand up if you deserve it. You, do you deserve it? Yes, you do. You are the children of the most high God. You are the heritage of a king. Think about that. Glory to God. Oh, I knew you were going to get excited about this. Lord gave it. The other day I was just talking to, to a good friend of mine. I said, the big payoff's coming. He went, oh, I said, man, I got to write a sermon on that. 
and, and it's spiritual, physical, and financial. So if you think I got a lot now, <laughs> wait till you see me in the near future. God's word is beyond human reasoning, beyond intellectual activity or range in research or induction of reason. I mean in every area of your life. You're going to have a hard time getting sick. Do you understand that? You're going to have a hard time getting old. Oh, let me get black with it. You're going to have a hard time mm -hmm, getting old. Hey! <laughs> and when you understand that, God's word's coming. You won't need a plastic surgeon. God's going to do it himself. Woo, Lord. Do you know there's not one old person in heaven? Not one. I mean, they, they, they look of great, I've been there, they look of great age, yet they look young. Lord, wait till you see me, how tall I'm going to be. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. That's what it's going to be saying in our land of Goshen. You hear what I'm saying? So I want you to write this down. The sinners ca cannot escape the retributions of God. The sinners cannot escape the retributions of God. They cannot elude the stroke of heaven. God's going to strike, and when he does, I'm telling you, all the stuff that you never thought you could ever have is going to come flying into you, flowing to you, spiritually, physically, financially. Your children, your children's children, and the Bible said the wealth of the sinner of the wicked is laid up for the just. So all that stuff they're, they're accumulating is coming to each and every one of us. Let me say it again. When he created this planet, there were no sinners. It wasn't created for sinners. It was created for his children. Yeah. So let me say it again. The sinners cannot escape the, the retributions of God. They cannot elude the stroke of heaven. See what I'm saying? It, it's going to happen. I tell people, I said, man, you, so I ain't giving you my money. It's not your money. It's the Lord's money. And I happen to be one of his sons. And I'm an heir with the Father and a joint heir with Jesus. And it's not about money. It's in everything, in every area of your life. Because you can be filthy rich, but if you're sick as a dog, you can't go nowhere. God says, beloved, I wish, I wish, this is God talking, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So you people that don't believe in prosperity, you're going to wind up being with the Egyptians. You understand what I'm saying? But my God, God's going to bless each and every one of us because he's no respect the person. It's already in the cards, if you want to call it as such. Let me say it again. The sinners cannot escape the retributions of God. They cannot elude the stroke of heaven. Write this down. There is a wealth in the sea of human life. Notice that. There is a wealth in the sea of human life, and it is in reach of the fisherman's hand. Ooh, Lord, gee. the Lord told me, so I'm going to bless you beyond your wildest dream. I got a $20 million donor coming. They don't know it yet, but it's coming, bless God. And it's coming in the very, very near future. Ooh, Lord. And the devil tried to shut me down during the COVID, shut me down. And ladies and gentlemen, it, from 2020 to the end of, uh, of uh, what, October 2022, I've had 10 $1 million donors, $5 million donors. Somebody shout somebody. Oh, glory to God. In every area. My line, I'm wearing tennis shoes with gold on them now. Hey, glory to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? God's going to do some glorious things. But he'll only do it for the people that are the source. See, you can't get a harvest unless you sow seed. I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. It's time for you to be blessed. That you don't have to worry about nothing. You want to go shop and let your wife do what she want to do, when she want, where she want, how she want, if that's what you want. Well, that's greed. No, no, that is plenty. Ain't a thing wrong. What you going to do when you get to heaven? Oh, no, Jesus. Can you put gravel on my street? No. No, I don't have gravel pits. I got gold pits. You don't think like God, God likes gold? The Bible said in the Garden of Eden, he had fine gold on top of the ground. Adam and Eve didn't have to dig it out the ground. It was standing right and just laying in the ground. Do you see what I'm talking about? I mean, the oysters of the world are going to say, we're going to have to produce some pearls. Women want pearls. You ain't listening to what I'm saying. Listen to me. See, these people, they, 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 these Israelites, they, they said, we can not have nothing. We don't have nothing. Man, they were giving their bread away. They didn't even put the leaven in it yet. They had to tie their leaven bowls, you know, they, so they could leaven it in their clothes. And they walked out with camels and caravans of all the wealth they spoiled the Egyptians. Satan, we're getting back everything you ever stole from us. That is what I mean. There is a wealth in the sea of human life. And, 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 and it is in reach of the fisherman's hand. Are you a fisherman? 
It's in reach of your hand, ladies and gentlemen. All you got to do is believe. People, Jody told me, she said, Daddy, everything you touch prospers. You know why? Because I know what I want. I know what belongs to me. I mean, I'm not trying to get your stuff, but you, if you're not born again, your stuff is my stuff. Now, oh, I'm going to get some ugly letters on that. I don't care. Hallelujah. <laughs> it don't make no difference. You go, I'm telling you, people say, you know, people, some people hate me because of the blessing I have. They, they won't invite me to the party, but I'm like Daniel. They didn't invite Daniel to the party, but I'm going to the party because I'm the only one that can read that handwriting on that wall. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, and God began to send a message out, and they had to go get Daniel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, God is sending the ministers and the prophets, and they, they say, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh, and I'll bless you in the city. I'll bless you in the field. I'll bless you going in. I'll bless you going out. Everything your tan touches, I will prosper it spiritually, physically, financially. We'll empty out the hospitals. We'll empty out the treasures of the nation. Do you understand what I'm saying? God's word is just that powerful. You've got to have a vision to see that. See, that's the fisherman's hand. You see, who was the best fisherman, Peter or Jesus? Jesus. He said, we taught all the night. That's your problem. You're trying to make it work. Just do what I tell you. Cash your net on the other side. And my God, he got a boat load of sinking fish. I mean, his partner's boats were sinking. Everything was sinking. That was the wealth that was in the sea because Jesus had a fisherman's hand. Write this down. The spoils of the wicked were turned to the enrichment of us, the church. The spoils of the wicked will turn to the enrichment of us, the church. Notice that. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen, but you got to learn how to handle that. See, it's easy to make a fortune. It is e it's easier to make a fortune than to keep it. See, not, see, you ever know most of those people that win the lottery? They're broke in three years because they don't know how to handle that. You understand that? They don't know how to handle that. And, 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 I mean, I, can you go through a billion dollars in three years? Yeah, if you're crazy. It's easier, to make, it's easier to make a fortune than to keep it. You have to learn discipline in your finance. You have to learn discipline in your health. You have to learn discipline, see? Love in its purest form is discipline. And God wants you blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going in. James, you're going to have so many guitars. Your wife is going to say, Lord, you're going to have to build a house just to put the guitars in there. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I used to buy all my guitars when I was a sinner at, at Chicago Guitar Gallery. In Chicago, oh, Lord, I'd go in there. I'd buy one every six weeks. I mean, I just say, Lord, I love them guitars. I mean, you know, if that's what you like. See, God want to give you what you like. Your, I preached the sermon here. Your desires are treasures in waiting. Just treasures. I mean, do you see what I'm saying here? You know what I'm but you got to have a fisherman's hand. My Lord. And you got to understand, the sinners can't stop it. I mean, I go into a place and I go, they don't even realize that they are, they are they, they're building this up for me. They're building this up for you. See, all them golden idols, God melted them down and put them in the temple. Used the gold. He didn't care about the idol. He used the gold, the silver. And they went out filthy rich, and there wasn't one feeble one amongst them. 430 years of back slave labor paid off in one second. Now, that's the big payoff. Whoo, let me say it again. The spoils of the wicked were turned to the enrichment of us, the church. See what I'm saying? That's why churches are supposed to be beautiful. Because why? They're God's house. Well, God says, be you there for imitators of God as dear children. What would you do if you went to heaven and the Lord was in the, was in the ghetto? And he said, well, this is the best we could do. And you should have said, well, I, I'd rather go back to Armand Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> or Old Metairie. Or Old Metairie, however you want to say it. So when I said, oh, no, if you think you've seen some beautiful houses, you ain't seen nothing till you get to heaven. Yeah. Not one flaw perfect everything and God said his will be done where where as it is where you better get ready ladies and gentlemen I'm telling you and God will put the blessing on you I'm telling you and he'll bless you beyond your wildest dream we had one of the uh, one of our financial gurus call us that they <laughs> they were looking at some of the finance they said man y'all are doing good doing good we're doing better than good you know, no, no, he, he can't get over that. What do you mean? I, I mean, I, I, I'm doing good. Son, you ain't seen what I'm capable of doing. You're not going to, you, you're going to be shocked at what's going to be in my coffers and what's in my coffers beyond human reason to be a blessing. I honestly believe this, ladies and gentlemen, that the government will come to the church if the church will do right. Yes. 
And where the blessing of God is, is in the church. It's in God's people, in each and every one of us, you see, because it was all created for us. Think about that for a minute. The other day, we decided to go out, and uh, we had, I hadn't been downtown to Orleans. Well. I said, yeah, let's, let's go down there. And we just went, and we just walked around with the Mr. B's, had a little gumbo, yah, yah. We just walking, me and her. We had, she would, she's preaching in two different states. You know, she's in one state, I'm in another. We just, she's preaching here, I'm preaching. I mean, it's happening all the time. So we're walking down there, and I said, well, let's just walk down the corner. And it was cold, you know. And so we just walked through, so walked in one of them stores. And I thought to myself, I didn't tell her that. I said, I can buy everything in here. I can buy everything in here. Good God about it, Lord. I wasn't bragging. I'm not bragging. I know you think I'm bragging. I'm not. I'm bragging on God. Do you understand? Amen. Then it dawned on me. See, you don't need to buy it. It's already yours. Cool. I just bring in a cool. I just, he said, I created it for you. I thought, my God, if I tell the owner that, he'll pass out. Yeah, he passed out. See, that is the most unbelievable, impossible, yet doable thing that God's going to do. Because if you'd have told the Israelites a day before that they were going to walk out with the spoil of Egypt, they thought you'd have lost your ever-loving mind. But God knows how to get the heathens' attention. He knows how to shake them so much that there ain't nothing left in their pockets by the time he's finished shaking it. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. I believe Jerry Lee Lewis had a little anointing on that song. Praise God, you know, you know, if you think about that. So when you understand that, the spoils of the wicked will turn to the en enrichment of us, the church. But remember, it is easier to make a fortune than to keep it. You see what I'm saying? So let me go over this part again. The sinners cannot escape the retributions of God. They cannot elude the stroke of heaven. That's what God did in one night. Pharaoh gave up. Egyptians gave up. Everything. The stroke came, baby. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and there is wealth in the sea of human life, and it is in the reach of the fisherman's hand. And the spoils of the wicked will turn to the enrichment of us, the church. It's easier. Remember, it's easier to make a fortune than to keep it. It's God's word. You see, when you understand that. Now write this down. Your, life, your life's work is your statue. Your life's work is your statue. It will elevate or degrade you. Let me say it again. Your life's work is your statue. It will elevate or degrade you. It determines the quality of your destiny. I mean, if you look in the artwork and you, you see someone that built the, uh, that, that uh, Michelangelo, my God. I mean, some of the things, uh, the La Pieta, if you've ever been to the Vatican, you've got to see that. It's the most amazing work you've ever seen in your life. You actually think it's cloth when it's marble. They call, they call uh, marble uh, the living stone. And they asked Michelangelo, see, you got to see this, because he had a fisherman's hand. See, you got to see that. They said, how can you do such work? And they looked at him with like that look like, are you, are you crazy? He said, oh, I just take away the excess. It's in the stone. You see, he said, all I do is just take away the excess. And even the excess is worth something. He said, because he could see the image in the stone. Can, the, you, can you see the image of the blessing of God, of the big payoff? See, right now, they can't see because it's in the stone. But the Holy Ghost is going to take out all the excess. And before you know it, you'll be a beautiful piece of artwork by the master's hand, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and blessed going out. Just take away the excess. That's all you got to do. Take away the excess. See what I'm saying? Yeah. People say, but how do you stay saved so easily? Uh, well, I don't let excess hang on me. See, the reason why people know when you're dieting, you lose the excess. You see, you just lose the excess. It's just that simple. I mean, don't complicate this. God said he will do this. Amen. Proverbs, I mean, I, I love Proverbs when he said that. And he said that the wealth of the sinner is laid up. Proverbs 13, verse 22. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Yes. I'm going to show you a scripture going to knock your socks off. Go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, you don't know where Ecclesiastes, go, go to the uh, back of the, to the contents and find it. Ecclesiastes, it was right before Psalms, I think. That's the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, right after that. I mean, Ecclesi watch this. I, this happened to me. I was in New York. You ever been in, anybody ever been in New York? That's a very busy place. Lord Jesus. And, uh, boy, it's hard to get a, if, if, this is when I used to fly commercial. And, uh, 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 and you know, but the Lord, <laughs> the payoff came. <laughs> the big payoff came. A jet. I don't care if you get mad. Get mad all you want. It don't matter. I just fly over your house and I'll tip the wing. 
And I don't mean that to be arrogant. No, it's a tool to preach this uncompromised word of God. But it was hard, man, if you're going in LaGuardia or Kennedy to get a, man, they'd be standing in line to try to get a cab, you know. That's before Uber. Yeah, that's way before Uber, you know. And man, I mean, you got to grab this and that. And uh, I want to read Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And you'll see that. In fact, do you have your Amplified Bible? Oh, get it on your iPad. I want you to read that. First, I'm going to read this, verse 26. This is not of the big payoff. Let's, listen, Kobashoko, let's look at me. You're going to get wealthier than you ever thought. It's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to get healthier than you ever thought. You're going to live longer than you ever thought. I'm telling you, man, your kids are going to be blessed beyond their wildest dream because you're a good person that leave an inheritance for his children's children. Good God Almighty. Do you understand that? Watch this. See, in, uh, uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, the, and the man that wrote this was the richest guy to ever live. His name was Solomon. He said, verse 26, for God give it to a man that is good in his sight. Look at me. Are you good in his sight? Yeah. Are you good in his sight? Yeah. You should say yes. Yeah. Why? Because you're saved by grace. Yeah. For God give it to a man that is good in his sight. It's wisdom and knowledge, and joy. That's pretty good. Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he gave travail to gather and to heap up. What do you think's going on? They're gathering right now and heaping up that he may give to him that is good before God. Are you good before God? Yeah. You got the payoff coming, ladies and gentlemen. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Let me have your iPad. I want to read that in the... Uh, or, uh, your phone, whatever you got, that don't make no difference. They can put it up on the screen. Well, so you can put it up on the screen if you like uh, amplify. and amplify. Yeah, Watch that, verse 26 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2. For to the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and heaping up that he may give to one who pleases God. <laughs> Underline that in your Bible. You ought to read that once a day. This also is vanity and a striving after the wind and a feeding on it. See, that's what's going to happen. You see, everything that they got will fade from their hands. God's word is true. People say, I don't believe it. It don't make no difference whether you believe it or not. Why? Because the stroke of heaven will happen in overnight. And it will happen, my God, and it will flow beyond your wildest dreams. You'll be so debt free, you won't know do it yourself. Yes. All right, put it, uh, can y'all put the message Bible up there? Let me read. Come on, bring it to me, Kevin. Hallelujah. This is the message. I love this translation. God may give wisdom and knowledge and joy to his favorites. <laughs> like, but sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Are oh, you God's favorite? Oh, Lord Jesus. Nothing but smoke and spitting in the wind. Glory to God. Oh, Lord. Joy, look at that. Joy to his favorites. Joy to his favorites. But sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Can I say it, Lord? Yeah. He said, yes, you can. Why are you mad at me? Because I'm blessed. Why are you mad at me? Because of my plane. Why are you mad at me? Because of my house. Keep that up there. Why you, put that, that verse back. Why are you mad at me? Answer the question. I'm just God's favorite. And he has given me favor. Why is my wife so pretty and yours is so ugly? Because I'm God's favorite. I ain't looking around. Don't look around here. Don't look around here. <laughs> look at Kathy. Oh, God. Oh, I'm, I'm moving now, son. Man, I tell you what, I, 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 mean, I got shocked uh, last night. Uh, you know, we <laughs> No, I, uh, yesterday uh, for lunch, we went to the seafood pot, you know, just sitting there eating like that. And I got up, you know, and, about that, and I saw Kathy going. I said, what? I, you know, she said, I'm just looking at you. I said, enjoy yourself. <laughs> she said, I'm just looking at you. You still look at this old man? She said, yeah. yeah. I thought, whew, I'm, got, I'm her favorite. One time she was in Honolulu shopping somewhere. I wasn't with her, and as some person saw her wedding ring, you know, she got a pretty nice diamond. And that person looked at her and said, somebody must really love you. Yeah. Is that right? I think I said that. And that's a blessing. You see, that's Ecclesiastes. Can you understand? What was Israel? 
God's chosen people. Payoff's coming, ladies and gentlemen. All the suffering your mother and father worked like a dog to get you through school. Never had anything, had to work two or three jobs. Everything that, that was stolen from them will be given back to you. Hundredfold. Now, do you understand why the devil will sell a junk to the church to make them preach that the hundredfold is not for today? Because he's got to give it up. There's no other choice in the matter. See, so your life's work is your statue. I like that. In other words, you, you, you're a piece of artwork. It will elevate or degrade you. It's either good or bad. It determines the quality of your destiny. So I made up my mind. I ain't giving the devil nothing, which is my next point. We must not relinquish our property to the oppressors. We must not. Write it down. We must not relinquish our property to the oppressors. You see what I'm saying? I just made up my mind. When I saw that, I said, the payoff, man, 430 years. I don't mean to sound arrogant. I come from a very poor family. I wasn't ashamed of that. You know, my mom and dad did the best they could. I was proud of my mom. You know, yeah. I mean, I, we didn't have much. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'd get an apple or an orange for Christmas. Come on now. Come on now. That's a fact. Anybody ever did that Nobody growing up? Yeah, you know, I mean, just the way it was. And I was glad to get it. Yes. Yeah. I remember I got, a, I got one toy, if I got a toy. I didn't get a toy till I was eight, nine. I, you know what I got for a birthday? Cake. Grandma would make a cake. Actually, it wasn't a cake. It was sweet cornbread. She, she called it salty cornbread and sweet cornbread, which means um, regular cornbread, and then she would put sugar in the cornbread for sweet cornbread. Anybody ever eat that? You know what I, I call it poor food, you know what I'm saying? I was glad to get it. I was glad to get it. And I'll never forget one time when I went to, oh, man, I went to school, and all I had was jeans. And you weren't allowed to wear jeans. You had to wear slacks. I didn't have any. But so there were several kids that they didn't stop them from going to school. But it was embarrassing. They go, he's poor because he got jeans on. They ain't saying that no more. I mean, I still got jeans on, but they're high-dollar jeans. Say what you want. I don't mean that to be, I'm not being arrogant. I'm telling you, but I remember that. Yes. Oh, man. And I remember my mama telling you, you know, if you serve God, just God will bless you. But you see, I didn't see it in their lives because they, they put a limit on it. God can't bless us that much. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Can you imagine a man that had his back beat by an Egyptian the day before bleeding because he was slave? making bricks and swell, just beating. That the next day, the guy that beat him gave him all his gold, silver, clothes. I'm pretty sure most of them probably said, let's go take a bath to get this mud of slavery off of us. Hmm. And they started walking. And everywhere they walked, God went before them. People say, you never know what God's going to do. Yes, he's a pillar of fire at night and a cloud by day. Hallelujah. And he wants to bless each and every one of you. How many of you going to receive that blessing? Amen. I want you to do And you don't get cocky and arrogant with it. I, I've told my granddaughter, and I, I told my daughter when Jody was growing up, I said, you know, God has blessed us, and I blessed her. I said, we don't look down on people. Money don't, money don't make you a great person. But I'm tired of the devil stealing from you. How many of you, your parents or your grandparents died too early? Anybody? That's what I'm talking about. Stole the health. Isn't that sad? You think he cares? Uh -uh. But you know what? He thinks he killed them. But God said if they're born again, they're going to be raised. Well, they're going to be raised from the dead even if they're sinners. Think about that for a second. So write this down. Just as the Egyptians had to give to Israel, so will the wealth of the wicked be given to us. There's no other choice. If Elon Musk, I don't know, I don't judge his heart, but if Elon Musk, I don't care if he owns Tesla, TikTok, it don't matter that day will come when this tsunami blessing of God will flow to you like you never thought possible. How can that be? Well, you can, ask the, you can ask the Israelites back then, how could it be? God showed up. God showed up. I got all debt. God, God called something called the year of Jubilee. He, he, he can cancel debt in one day. That's how Germany got on its feet. Do you understand that Germany was broke 200,000% inflation? Do you know that? 
But Hitler came in and hated the Jews, but he used the Jewish concept. Lin Koi, he, he, he proclaimed a day, it was a day instead of a year, a day of Jubilee. He canceled all debt. All of a sudden, people that were in debt, it was over. The next thing you see, the Nazis, they're driving convertible Mercedes. What happened? He used the God concept. This is a God concept, the big payoff. In every area of your life. Quit thinking about just stuff, but you're going to get stuff. See, people say, you shouldn't worry about stuff. Well, evidently God does, because he sure made him take it all out of Egypt. In fact, I, I want to, yeah, I mean, he made him take it out of Egypt. I want to go back to uh, 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 Exodus 12. Isn't that good, that verse in Ecclesiastes? Yeah. Exodus 12 again. Let, let, me, let me read that. I want to go on a little further here. Watch this, what he says. And, ooh, right here. Yeah, praise the Lord. Let me talk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot, and 600,000 on foot that were men beside children, and a mixed multitude went up also with them in flocks and herds and even much cattle. My God, can you imagine what was coming out of Egypt? E- Egypt was the wealthiest nation of that day. Whew. Devil was mad. If you keep on reading, he wants to kill them. But you don't mess with God. Once God takes a, you can't touch his stuff. And they died in the Red Sea. Think about that for a minute. Now, you see, they could have been in the promised land in 11 days. Why did they go into the wilderness? Because they didn't know how to handle it. So I'm going to come Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want you, yeah, I want you to start training yourself how to handle my finance. I want you to start training yourself how to handle health. I want, you, you need to start doing this so you, you'll be ready when this tsunami of blessing comes. Thank you. And it's sooner than you think. It's sooner than you think. You see what I'm saying? You have to start training yourself. Yeah. Because if, if you don't learn it here, God's going to send you to school when you get to heaven. Write this down. You'll be blessed by it. First, I want to say, just as the Egyptians had to give to Israel, so will the wealth of the sinner be given to us. That's Proverbs 13, verse 22. Now, why, why, why do I want you excited? Write this down. The enthusiasm of a great body of people is always contagious. The enthusiasm of a great body of people is always contagious. Always. Always. Boy, you get people that are excited. Don't you like it when everybody's excited when the saints win? I said, when the saints win. I said, when the saints win. (laughs) It's kind of dull in the the dome when they're losing it. Oh, but if they win it, my God, think about that. That's an amazing thing. We went on a cruise one time with Travis and, and all that. You know, Travis built real good, you know. I mean, you know, he is really built. He, he, yeah, I mean, one time he was in, my, I think, my daughter's yard, and we, girl just slammed the brakes on just to look at it. He had his shirt off. You remember? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was so funny. Well, he was walking. We were walking. We were on that ship. Uh, I can't remember where we were. Somewhere in Mexico. Or, and he had his shirt off. <laughs> Not only were the women turning around looking at Travis, the men were too. <laughs> I thought, good Lord. I said, shake something for me there, Travis. <laughs> I mean, he just muscle everywhere. Oh, but that didn't come just hoping. That didn't come. He prepared himself. You go to his house, you got all them weights in the garage and bloop, and all that kind of stuff. Takes preparation. I used to look like Travis. You got to see it by faith, but I did. <laughs> but see, the excess covered it. Hmm. I'm cutting my own guts out here. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you see what I'm saying? So when you understand what God is saying here, the enthusiasm of a great body of people is always contagious. I like that. Write this down. Responsibility is a great developer. Oh, it's good when you become, when you have responsibility. Responsibility is a great developer. Where there is responsibility, there is growth. Let me say it again. Responsibility is a great developer. Where there is responsibility, 
there is growth. That's why God said, take them in the wilderness. I got to make them responsible. They got to learn how to handle all this. They got to learn to be an army. They have to learn how to do things. You see, God don't want you to ever become greedy because he blessed you beyond your wildest dreams. Let me tell you something about God. It's amazing. You talk about a buffet. They're all griping and mad because they want to go back to Egypt, eat the flesh pots. God said, you want some meat? God sent quail. Now, quail's good eating. To quail, four foot thick, 24 miles long. They died with the birds in their mouth because they were greedy. He rained bread from the sky. He said, I pick it every day. Some people lazy. We're going to pick it. And, and, and if, they do, if they try to store it up, it would rot. Why? Because he wants to supply your need every day. Amen. Every day. You see what I'm saying? So God has blessed me and Kathy beyond our wildest dreams. And I, and I thank the Lord for it. And I think I'm just still overwhelmed. God, why? He said, because you can handle it. But see, I had to develop that responsibility. Like I say, it's easier, it's easier to make a fortune than it is to keep it. Let me say it again. Uh, responsibility is a great developer. Where there's responsibility, there is growth. See, so when you understand that, you grow in your spiritual life to the fullness of the stature of Christ. That's, what he, that's why he sent them. They weren't trying to just be getting the heat of it. Just grow. That's all you got to do. When you was a kid, did you ever used to notch the side of the, uh, see how far you grow and you, you put a little line or nothing like that and your mama get mad because you mess up the, uh, the door frame just trying to grow. But the day will come when you'll get what you're supposed to get. It took me at least, I would say at least 40 years to get to 18. God, I couldn't wait till I get 18. And guess what I got? I got a letter from the government. <laughs> Gentlemen, Vietnam was kicking, Jane. Kicking. Oh, God. Now, from 18 to 30, it took mm, five years. 30 to 50, a year and a half. 50 to 73, three months. No, it's actually the same. You say, you know, you say, whoa, time goes fast. No, it's the same. The reason why you, <laughs> is that it, it speeds up on you because, uh, you know, you're doing so much and you forget about the time. And all of a sudden, yeah, it's exactly the same. So I made up my mind. God would develop me in my responsibility. So he, he said, build this church with no limits. I took responsibility. I had to, de I had to develop myself. Oh, come on, Shokun, thank you. I had to look at my stature, me. Am I quality? Can I become a piece? Can I do this? Because American Bank says I can't. Hibernia Bank says I can't. Can't. But God said you can. So I said I will develop myself in this responsibility. And I began to grow, and I built it debt-free and under budget. Not bragging. Because I had to become responsible with your seed. I will not be lazy with your seed. I tell people, you give me $1,000 this morning and Sunday, I'll get 1,000 souls by Friday. I can do it. I don't mean that private. Because we have the capability to do it. We have the technology to do it. You see what I'm saying? And when you understand that, spiritual, physical, and financial, why can't you own the banks? Somebody else? How come it's always somebody else? Why can't it be you? Because the churches kept you down. Don't get crazy. Watch this prosperity stuff. Yet you go look at them churches. Them churches are blessed. The buildings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, God trusts. Look at me, all of you. God, are you all, on, all over the world? God trusts you. The church does it. The government does. That's why they don't let you send in your taxes. They take it out of your check. But notice God lets you give tithe. Oh, you never know something about God. He's never changed the rate. How many times your bank changed the rate? Your credit cards changed the rate. They don't trust you. But God does. 
He said, and if you'll let me develop you, I'll give you responsibility. I'll cause great growth in your life. So responsibility is a great developer. Where there is responsibility, there is growth. Now, I want to talk about business for a minute. Everybody say aptitude. Aptitude, aptitude for business will make a person a thriving tradesman. Aptitude for business will make a person a thriving tradesman or a merchant prince. That's why some of these people get so filthy rich and they got ideas in the garage. You know, all our technology, most of them come out of somebody's garage. You know, uh, you know the, uh, the Bill Gates and the Elon Musk and all the, the Apple people and all that, out of a garage because they had aptitude for business. Aptitude for business will make a person a thriving tradesman or a merchant prince. See what God told them, Israelites, don't forget the trades that you learned in Egypt. Now, I'm going to use business sense to make you function. That's why people hate the Jews. That's right. You know why they hate them? Because they're God's chosen people. No, no. It's because they know how to handle finance. So they get mad. They turn out to be financiers. Well, they learned the trade. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you think about Jews, most, you know, they got black Jews. Did you know that? Ethiopian Jews. But most Jews are white, but they don't care about that. They're mad because they have finance. And they use anti-Semitic statements against them, and they shouldn't. It was given by God. I have the anointing of increase on my life. People are mad at me about that. I don't care. He gave it to me. He put it on me. See, what do you want me to do? So I developed that aptitude for business. Why? So I can be the tradesman or the merchant prince. It's good to own it yeah. instead of something owning you. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why it's so wonderful to be debt free. A man asked me this the other day. I was preaching, ministering. He said, Brother Jesse, <clears throat> you know, if all your partners quit giving to you, I mean, I, he said, what would you do? I said, well, I'd have to get off of television because television costs a lot of money, baby. I'd have to lay off all my staff. I'd have to do everything. I said, but you know what me and Kathy could do? What's that? I said, we get two rocking chairs. We stick them in the front. They can't take the buildings. <laughs> and me and Kathy rock. What y'all doing? Wait for things to get better. Yeah, that's right. We ain't going to lose a thing. Amen. But yet, come January 1, I'll be preaching 47 years, and I've never laid off one person in my life. And I'm asked by Jewish rabbis to preach in synagogues. I'm asked by great archbishops and bishops to preach in the Catholic Church. And I do it. I accept. And oh, I get criticized. Oh, Lord. Wait, that's not your camp. Christianity cannot operate without Judaism. Judaism is the foundation of Christianity. Jesus is Jewish. Catholics believe in Jesus. But then I must be Catholic. Methodists believe in Jesus. Then I must be Methodist. Baptist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Church of God, Word of Faith, full gospel, symbols of God. Do they believe in Jesus? Then I must be all those. I become all things to all men. You understand what I'm saying? So why can't I be comfortable in a Jewish house? Why can't I be comfortable in a black man's house or, black, or a white man's house or an Asian, why can't I? Because we all one race. Amen. I wish people would get that in their mind and stop stirring this pot. And you don't think God believes in that? A mixed multitude went out to all. Oh. oh. And I want to tell you something about Father Abraham. He's the first Jew, but he was a heathen. Till God pulled him out of Ur of the Chaldees. Ah. And made him Jewish. So Jewish is really not a race. They've been made. It's like the mafia. You're a made man? I'm a made man. Hey, you don't touch a made man. Ah. 
So I have no problems with denomination or non-denomination or interdenomination or race, color, creed, human race. I like you. You like me. So you see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any difference. It wouldn't bother me if Kathy would be an Italian or an African or Japanese or Chinese. It, so what is she? She's a Cajun. I didn't care. I didn't like her high school, but I liked her. Because I graduated from Terrebonne High School. She graduated from South Terrebonne. It didn't make no difference. I didn't marry her because of her color. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You know, because love don't have no color. It just happens. You see what I'm saying? Aptitude. Forbiddenness will make a person a thriving tradesman or a merchant prince. Write this down. Worldly people have no liking for the company of the converted. If you think the world's going to love you, you can hang it up. It's not going to happen. You have become separate unto God. Worldly people have no liking for the company of the converted. They want me poor. They don't want me on television. They know I got the ability to change people's lives yes. through the power of Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So I, I, let, the, I let God do that. Well, we got to take him off. We got to shut him down. See, God really believes in free speech. Believes in free will. I wish he wouldn't sometimes. Sometimes I wish he'd just make people do something. But he won't do that. Why? Because he'll honor you. Because you see, if you've got a free will to walk in and a free will to walk out, you'll find out if somebody really loves you or not. So worldly people have no liking for the company of the converted. Yeah, but just the things are hard. Yeah. But write this point down. I'll go over it again. It is only when we feel cut off or all bridges are burned, or no one to lean on, that we discover our full inherent power. It's only when we feel cut off, or all bridges are burned, or no one to lean on. Remember that song, lean on me. Hmm. That we discover our full inherent power. You know, when I really discovered my faith in finance, this building. God told me to build this building, Bobby. Everybody thought I had the money, all of it. And I was going to build it for $7 million, the whole campus. They said, that's impossible. Uh, you got, you, you got uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the guy that does, does the plans. What's his name? Uh, architect. You can't do that. You got, man, you got fine stuff in here. Uh, the contract, but Jesse, you just can't do that. I mean, we know the price of lumber, steel, and, you know, everything else. So, uh, Lynn called, they made me go look back. at. I had $1.2 million. I had that. Which you couldn't even buy half of this bill. Oh, God. You can't get one-third of this bill. No. you got. <laughs> it's just amazing. But I found out my inherent power. When I walked out of a boat of religion and started walking on the water. Now, do you understand why I want you close to me? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, listen. You understand why I want y'all close to me? Yeah. Do you understand why I want to make a big, I'm not so I can count you. I'm not interested in that. I want you to have all, all. all. Everybody say all. all. It's a small word, but it has big content. Yeah. Spiritually, physically, financially. I want every color, nationality, and creed in here. Why? So they can forget their color. They can forget their nationality. They can forget their creed and just be family. Amen. See what I'm saying? What's wrong with that? Now let's go, let's, 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 let's regress to the nursery. Let's go to the nursery and see the little white kids and the little black kids and the little brown kids and the yellow kids and the red kids. They just play it. Oh, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you stop the crime? Get them saved. That's right. Amen. You shut it down in a second. You can. 
this inherent power. Remember this, it's only when we feel cut off. All the bridges are burned. Or no one to lean on. That we discover our full inherent power. I made up my mind I wouldn't go to the banks, Debbie. Nothing wrong with the banks. I'm not against that. But I had to find out how strong I was. I said, Lord, he said, you can do this. I will make you a thriving tradesman. Mm. A merchant prince to, to the point that Chase Bank asked me for financial <laughs> information. Uh, what do you think about this? What do you think? Who would have thought? Advice. Me? Why are you, man, you got, you, got the, you got the gurus, man. Uh, but there's something about you. Because I told them all no a few years ago. They came down. I call them the Pharisees. <laughs> Wanted to tell me where to put my money, which is what they do. And I listen, but they don't realize that I had went to the boss of the bosses, the copy to do the decopy. God Almighty. He already told me what to do. I said, but I'll listen. You got to do this, put your money, this, 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 this. I said, I'm not going to do that. You know? No, I said, I'm going to do this, this, that, this, this. Oh, Reverend, you're going to lose your money. It's my money, isn't it? Yes. Do what I say. A year went by. Probably a year went by. We shop on Christmas Eve. I love to shop on Christmas Eve because all of y'all are not there. <laughs> Most people got their stuff. So I get to walk in the mall and I just enjoy my listening. Look at the Christmas lights. Kathy's already got our Christmas lights up. It's just blessing me. They're not finished decorating, but I'm like, oh. who was it? Debbie said, how many Christmas trees you got? <laughs> Kathy got them all over the place. So I'm just walking. And, you know, Kathy brings me to carry bags. Bring it to the car. Go over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You finished? No, no, I got to do it. Okay, bring it over there. And I don't mind. Yes, I do mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carrying all that stuff. Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus. I don't care how much money you spend. I just got to carry the bags. Well, I told Kathy, I said, look, I saw one of my employees. I said, are y'all going home? They said, yeah. I said, you mind if I get a ride? Y'all heard me tell this stuff. They said, I said, can y'all take me home? Because they live pretty close. Yeah. I said, Kathy. She said, I ain't finished yet. I said, well, here's the keys to the car, and I'll see you. I said, okay. So I went home. Christmas Eve. Just love it. <laughs> Kathy calls me on the phone. Jesse. I said, yeah, Kathy. I thought something was wrong. I thought the car broke something. No. She said, uh, the uh, vice president, uh, the, the head of the uh, thing, uh, Chase there, uh, wants to give us a Christmas basket. I said, a Christmas basket? Yeah, because of all the business you've done with Chase, and, you know, but they tried to deliver it to the ministry, and they couldn't because we were closed, you know. I said, well, yeah. She said, it's real big. It looked about the size of a coffin. <laughs> That's the biggest fruit basket I've ever seen in my entire life. She said, now she, she, she gets real quiet. Do you think I ought to tell them where we live? I said, Kathy, you know where we live? They got all our money. They know where we live. <laughs> it's my story, Kathy. I'm going to tell the truth here, praise God. <laughs> she said, you leave out the small details. <laughs> so I said, I said, yeah. Now, you know, I was in them nasty pajamas that she tried to throw away for 35 years. They finally died. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you had to hold them by the hand like that because they go, they go down on you, son. So all of a sudden, ding dong, I walked in, I got them pajamas on, opened the door, and he goes, oh, Reverend, how you doing? I hope I'm not bothering you. I said, no, you do, I look, do I look like I'm bothered? I'm holding my pajamas. I got a T-shirt on, them raggedy, short, cut off pajamas. <laughs> like them things. <laughs> he said, I want to give you fruit, but can you help me? So I had to go walk out in the yard, holding the pajamas. pajamas no elastic. Right. Man, I saw that, I'm telling you, that, that, 
that basket as big as this, big as this, eh? wow. is this pew. Wow. That's the biggest fruit I've ever seen in my life. Heavy, man, 80 something pounds. He said, grab one in again. So I got it. I said, well, Lord Jesus. So, man. so I held on to my pajamas because I didn't want no people to get revelations. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I pick up that thing. He brings it to the house. We actually walking like this. <laughs> Finally, he said, can we put it on that counter? I said, I got to turn loose of these pajamas to get this out. So I said, pull it up as high as you can. And I got it like this way. He goes, and I pulled it up. And my pajamas went down, but he had his eye. And I grabbed him real and I pulled it back up. But he didn't see it, so. <laughs> and he said, Reverend, can I say something to you? I said, yeah. He said, you know, when you told us in January, you noticed that our guru who's out in New York, Wall Street people, which I believe in. Don't misunderstand me. I mean, you know, they, they're smart, smart people. Uh, we told you you lose all your money. I said, yeah. He said, Reverend, you're the only one of our clients that made money. I said, what? He said, you're the only one of our clients that made money. He said, if God ever tells you about the price of gold, would you, would you call us? I said, sure. Because I had told him God got a lot of gold. He uses it for concrete. <laughs> Takes a while for y'all to get it, but listen to me. There's not asphalt, there ain't concrete. You walk on gold. It looks like this. See that gold? See on them shoes? Get a shot of this, boys. Get close. Come on, man. Look, I paid a fortune for them things. Suck in there, man. See that gold? Some of y'all got that in your teeth. Okay. <laughs> Look, you Gold is very, very expensive. And people will do anything to get it. And one of the worst tragedies of the world was the Nazis who pulled Jews' teeth out in the gold. They didn't care about the people. Watch this. It's only when you feel cut off or all bridges are burned or no one to lean on that they discovered a full inherited power. I discovered it, and we built it debt-free. Let me close with this. We must produce a ambition arousing, a grit awaking environment. We must produce an ambition arousing, a grit awakening, awakening environment. My environment that I put around me must be healthy, wealthy, in every area. Well, Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus was exactly like that. When it was time to eat, he fed 5,000 people. That's not an environment of wealth. I don't know what is. He wore nice clothes and they gambled for it. You don't gamble for rags, ladies and gentlemen. You gamble to get something better than what you got. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? My God. And he had 12 full-time people and they all never were hungry. Some were married and he took care of them. And he had 70 part-time. But the biggest payoff is when God pay, Jesus paid off all our sin. Yes. God, it made us the righteousness of God. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Lock, stock, and bang. So not only do we have the big payoff in the spirit world, but we're going to have it in the financial world. I'm telling you, listen to me, it's going to happen. It'll happen unless you turn to be a sinner. Unless you turn and not receive what God wants you to have. Devil, Daryl been trying to kill you how many years? 50. Yeah, 50, you still here. Pray for you every day, call your name before God. Where my flag lady? I call you, I call, I pray for you every day. Sweetheart, I don't know your name. I don't know very few people in this church. Kathy knows them. I say, Lord, the flag lady. He said, I know her. The flag lady. I call my employer, I call him wingman. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> I'm a wingman. Praise God. <laughs> what a blessing. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Strong Jaw. <laughs> praise God. That's a good name, Strong Jaw. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, do you understand? I'm so excited for you, spiritually, physically, financially. 
I'm not just trying to say, I just gave you scripture for all that. And he's no respect to person. And I close with this. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, was that yesterday, way back when? Yeah. What are you willing to receive? When you understand this, even your children, good men make an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner laid up for the just. See, so stay in a state of expectation. The other day I was in, I'll close with this, I was in Studio C. Every time I'm doing something, whether it's Faith the Facts or Boardroom Chat or whatever, I have George. I call him George. His real name is Jorge, but his mama don't know that. His name is George, <laughs> the way it's spelled, J-O-R-G-E. <laughs> they call it in uh, Spanish, Jorge. I don't see how you get that out of that, but anyway. I said, what's my name? Is it Jay Solid? What's my name? Hesse or Jesse? <laughs> I don't know. We laugh about it. So I asked Chrissy. I said, hey, Chris, what y'all doing for Thanksgiving? Oh, my mama's cooking. Oh, I could see it in her, I could see it in her eyes. And she says, I'm eating too. <laughs> I said, that's good. Thanksgiving, you should. I'm eating, man. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. So is Kathy cooking? No. <laughs> but the Roosevelt Hotel is. <laughs> so we're gonna be there. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing. <clears throat> because Meredith wants to eat at the Roosevelt Hotel. Okay, and we get to see the uh, Christmas decorations. I think they put that all up right, right for Thanksgiving. Beautiful place. If you ever really want to go somewhere, wait till they say December 1st. Go, just park your car and go walk in that for you. Has anybody ever been there? Am I telling the truth? That is the most beautiful thing. How they do that? Whew. It just blesses you. You just walk around it. So we're going to have a wonderful time. Yeah, giving God thanks because none of it can happen without him. What I will pay for one person, my mother and father, it would take 12 years, maybe 15 years of a Thanksgiving meal to equal just what I have to pay for one person at the Roosevelt. I thought about that the other day. I said, boy, Lord, I sure wish mama was alive, she could see this. You know what the Lord said? She is alive. And that, yes, that buffet's nothing compared to mine. He said, you ought to see my decorations. There's an old movie called The Bishop, The Bishop's Wife. The old one with Cary Grant, Loretta, uh, Loretta Young, David Niven, all of them are passed on. I like to watch it. It's in black and white where Cary Grant is an angel. And they're all trying to, we, we decorate trees so different. Remember all them little, that you throw it up in the air and hope it had icing, icicles or whatever you call it, doing everything now you can. And you know, you, you throw some people, <laughs> trying to get up. You don't do that anymore, you know. And they was, and they had walked out and he says, boy, I hadn't done a Christmas tree in a long time. He goes, Anybody know what I thought you seen the movie? But the lights weren't on. He went, oh, I forgot. And the lights came on. Kathy did that for me one time. I always wanted them Christmas lights. Couldn't it? Couldn't get it. Didn't have any of that. Never had it. Never in my whole entire life growing up. And I went preach for Lloyd Singley at Crowley. Crowley Assembly of God. And I called her that night and I said, Kathy, I'm coming home. I'm going to drive few hours, but I'm coming on. <laughs> she said, I'm going to surprise Jesse. I never forgot it. It was one of, I don't know that may seem stupid to you, but it meant a lot to me. Amen. Kathy got out, she hung up, went to the store and bought them big Christmas lights. I had, and I had monkey grass around my whole house, back, just when I was in home. And then uh, it was one, number one North Cane Court. Man, I got there about what, 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that. Been, maybe longer later than that, 2 o'clock in the morning. And all them lights is on. It shocked me so bad. I hit the brakes. I thought, that's not my house. That's my house. And Kathy was standing in the front yard. Cold. <laughs> I, got, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I, I was 7, 8. 
nine, ten. I went, I have lights. She said, I knew you'd like this. She worked pretty hard to get that all together. You know what I mean? That ain't easy. I said, oh, Kathy, let's stay out here. No. <laughs> you can stay out here. I'm going inside. Even Bojack, old Bojack. <laughs> Ali had a pool. He walked out. He went, ooh, it's cold. He went back inside, too. He went, I just stood there. I just, I just was shocked. I was overwhelmed. I'm still like that. They put these beautiful red trees in the foyer. We got white gold trees in the white ballroom. We got green trees in the red. Oh, we got trees all over. I just stand there and look at that and I go, when you were seven, can you see it? This is what you wanted and you couldn't afford it. And I, I just look at God and I say, God, thank you. That may not seem much to you, but that, that's a lot to me. Thank you for letting me do this. Yeah. Thank you. He said, you enjoy it? Wait till you see the one I got in your house. I said, are you going to do this? Like Cary Grant? He said, well, I'm better than Cary. <laughs> that may sound crazy. That was the big payoff for me when you made them lights. And I still do it. Come Christmas and everybody decorate. I said, Cat, get in the car. Let's go drive around, look at the lights. How many people do that? I do it all the time. I just like it. I just... Boy, like we found a house here in Omaha. We stopped, and the man come out. And I, I said, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. He goes, it's a disease. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I thought I did it all, but every time, every year, I find more stuff. You couldn't put your hand on the house, and it wasn't lights and just beautiful stuff. I mean... He said, it's a disease. I said, well, don't get healed. He said, Do you, are you enjoying it? I said, sir, I'm over. He, could, he said, God, you, I said, you have no idea how much that, your house, and those that means to me. And I'm glad you have it. I didn't try to go home and do my house better. I don't believe in that stupid stuff. I just enjoyed it. I said, you have a great vision. He goes, it's a disease. <laughs> he said, I ain't no telling what I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, next year, good. Lord. The whole roof, the whole roof is covered with lights. It's the most amazing thing you ever seen. Made me want to believe in Santa Claus again. <laughs> I mean, I just stood there. I said, I hope you don't mind. No. And, you know, sometime I got up at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. He said he leaves the morning all night. I said, I'm going to drive over there, but I don't want to get arrested, you know. Just <laughs> stand out there like a crazy fool. But it was something. Did you enjoy it today? Yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.